I'm Kevin Kreski, and to my right I have Lisa Bentley. Lisa, one of the unique things about triathlon is the transition. And a lot of folks get all this coaching that teaches them how to swim, bike, and run, but a lot of things people miss out on is transition training. And ironically, at one race out here, you had the fastest tra transition. Why don't you give us a little bit of insight on what it takes to do a proper transition to get in and get out of this thing? Ironically, the transition really starts when you're finishing up the swim. You want to visualize what you have to do when your two feet hit the ground. So essentially, you're running up those stairs, you're taking off your bathing cap and your goggles, and you're, if you happen to have one of those speed suits on, you want to be getting it down around your waist and, and gently getting it down lower. You've got to grab your bag at the transition tent because they have to allocate, to, you know, make sure everyone got out of the water. So whether you have anything in there or not, you have to grab that bag. Bag. You run through the tent, and you might at this stage. I like to have my helmet in my bag if that's allowed. Uh, sometimes different races have different rules, so that I can run out and actually be still putting my helmet on as I'm running. I don't want to do anything standing still. Right. I want to be in motion. So I'd be putting on my helmet, my race number belt, uh, my glasses, uh, maybe putting some salt pills, uh, you know, in my jersey or down my top, something like that. Other athletes might be doing a full gear change, but you just have to be efficient and be really calm and yet not wasting any time and then you run out along the back of the uh, the pier there and then you run to your bike and away you go but the whole time I'm just thinking about staying relaxed but I visualize the entire process when I'm still in the swim and then likewise when I'm going to do the transition from the bike to the run the last five kilometers of the bike ride I'm visualizing exactly what I'm going to do when I come off the bike I'm going to get my feet out of my shoes and I'm going to start thinking okay I'm going to be getting on my running shoes I'm might make a little change. I might have a wardrobe change and visualizing what I'm going to do for that. So you run into transition again, you run around the pier, you grab your bag, you go in and I take stock because I don't want to be running out without maybe a top on or a bottoms on. Put on my socks, put on my cycle, uh, my running shoes, my sunglasses, my hat, my fuel belt, make sure I've got my fuel in there, my power gels, uh, my nutrition and then I head out onto the run. But really going through it in my head is one of the key things to a smooth transition, staying calm, not spending too much time, but maybe even putting some water over your head, especially in a race like this, to keep that core uh, body temperature down. Uh, this isn't the time to be putting on makeup or blowing your hair dry. Just keep everything moving forward. It's all part of the race, and it could be the difference between winning your age group and maybe not making a certain cutoff. So we have to get really good at those transitions. Now, one thing you keep keying in on, and I keep hearing you talk about, is visualization. Now, are you a big fan and come like today? Today is the big bike drop-off day. Now, would you recommend getting your visualization started today by walking through the transitions and knowing where everything is at? Absolutely. The visualization starts Monday even when you're visualizing yourself performing well and executing this race uh, well, swim, bike, and run. But right now, if I was checking my bike in, I'd be checking it in. I'd be going over all the details on my bike, figuring out exactly where I've been racked, and doing a walkthrough of everything and actually visualize myself coming out of the swim, grabbing my bag, changing, walk, going to my bike, and then doing the opposite. I walk the whole process. It's easier to do it when your heart rate's 60 beats per minute than when it's 160 beats per minute tomorrow. So taking stock of all those things and then it all falls into place tomorrow. There it is, folks. You heard it from Lisa Bentley, who has one of the fastest transition times in Ironman history. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> my pleasure.